Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, here to guide today's discussion on a topic that affects us all, the air inside our homes. Whether we realize it or not, our indoor environment can be filled with invisible particles that may pose risks to our health. Today we'll be discussing how everyday scented products like wax melts, candles, and air fresheners contribute to this issue. Joining me is Ilara Skye. Ilara, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad to be part of this conversation. Indoor air quality might sound like a minor concern, but current research shows it has a real impact on our respiratory health. We're talking about tiny particles that can lodge deep into our lungs, often stemming from products we use to make our homes smell good or appear fresher. Let's begin by looking at scented wax melts, a product many people consider a safe option because they don't involve an open flame. The assumption is that flame-free equals risk-free, but the data, particularly from new studies, tell a more complicated story. According to research highlighted on Mercola.com, these wax melts release a group of chemicals called terpenes. Elara, would you break that down for our listeners? Sure. Terpenes are naturally occurring compounds that give products their signature scents, such as floral or citrus aromas. When you plug in a wax warmer and melt scented wax, those terpenes escape into your indoor air. Now, the terpenes themselves aren't necessarily the main problem. The real concern appears when these terpenes interact with ozone, which is already present in low levels inside our homes. That reaction, as I understand it, creates particles too small for the naked eye to see. Could you explain why their size matters? When terpenes interact with ozone, they form nanoparticles. These particles are extremely tiny, so they can travel deep into our respiratory system. Because of their microscopic size, they're not just irritating to the upper airways. They can reach delicate areas in the lungs. People with existing respiratory conditions might notice more immediate discomfort but long-term exposure carries risks for almost everyone. One of the important studies mentioned on Mercola.com noted that wax warmers can emit up to a thousand times more terpenes than scented candles. That's a striking comparison. We often hear warnings about the soot or fumes from candles, yet flame-free wax warmers may be even more significant sources of these airborne chemicals. Yes, and this ties into overall indoor air pollution. When researchers measure air quality in a home where wax melts are used, they find elevated levels of volatile compounds, especially if windows are closed or the space isn't well ventilated. In such conditions, the particles and gases can accumulate quickly. There's another angle. Candles and fresheners aren't the only culprits. We also have cleaning sprays, scented household products, and even some personal care items. All of these can release terpenes that combine with ozone to form nanoparticles. Another study highlighted on Mercola.com notes that in a short span of time, using ordinary scented products can produce particle concentrations comparable to running a gas stove or even encountering traffic exhaust. Exactly. It's eye-opening because many people associate air pollution with things like heavy traffic, factories, or outdoor smog. Yet these recent findings show that a simple action like spraying a scented product indoors can, under certain conditions, replicate those levels of airborne particulates. This underscores the importance of awareness. What we bring into our homes matters. Now, let's discuss the specific health risks. Dr. Mercola's analysis points out respiratory irritation as a major concern. Nanoparticles, due to their size, can sneak past the body's usual defenses. Inhaled particles often lead to mild symptoms like coughing, irritation in the throat, or shortness of breath. Over time, though, this can become more serious. And if someone in the household has asthma or another respiratory condition, those particles may exacerbate attacks or lead to more frequent flare-ups. Even individuals who consider themselves healthy might develop long-term issues from consistent exposure. It's not always an immediate, dramatic reaction it can manifest as subtle changes in breathing patterns or increased susceptibility to respiratory infections. The point is not to alarm people, but to inform them. We can't see these particles, so it's easy to dismiss any risk. However, knowledge is the first step to better health decisions. We all like a pleasant smelling home, so let's shift to practical tips on reducing these indoor pollutants. 
Ilara, what strategies does Dr. Mercola and his team recommend for tackling these issues? The first and simplest approach is ventilation. Opening your windows on a regular basis allows fresh air to sweep away accumulated particles. Even just a few minutes of circulating outdoor air can lower the concentration of these terpenes and other volatile compounds. It sounds basic, but it's one of the most effective ways to keep indoor air fresh. Yes, and living in a climate where you can't always open the windows might complicate that. But even a brief window of time helps. Another strategy is to choose unscented versions of common products. Laundry detergents, cleaning supplies, and, of course, anything used to freshen a room. Fewer fragrances mean fewer terpenes to react with ozone. Exactly. People also might consider using natural alternatives. For instance, if you enjoy aromatherapy, using high-quality essential oils in moderation could be an option. But it's important not to go overboard. Even natural products can produce nanoparticles if used excessively. It's all about balance and informed choices. When it comes to technology, Mercola.com also highlights the use of proper air filtration systems. Standard filters can trap larger particles, but photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO, purifies the air more thoroughly. This technology, combined with a good HEPA filter, can reduce airborne pollutants significantly. Yes, PCO uses ultraviolet light to convert contaminants into harmless substances. Unlike a regular filter that simply traps pollutants, PCO aims to neutralize them. This option can be more costly up front, but for those dealing with persistent indoor air quality issues or serious sensitivities, it's worth considering. Before we wrap up our tips, I want to address some frequently asked questions that appeared in the Mercola article. For instance, one question is, what are the health risks of using scented wax melts? The answer provided is quite direct. Wax melts release tiny particles that irritate the lungs and can lead to breathing issues over time, especially if your living area isn't well ventilated. Right. Another question touches on how terpenes from wax warmers affect indoor air quality. The short answer is that they mix with ozone to produce pollutants that reduce air quality significantly. And because wax warmers emit a high volume of terpenes, even brief use can lead to a notable jump in these harmful particles. There's also the question about nanoparticles from air fresheners. The research shows they're indeed dangerous. They can bypass your body's natural filters, lodging deep in the lungs. It's comparable to pollution from a diesel engine or a gas stove. So what's the best way to reduce these risks at home? We've covered it. Ventilation, filtration, and limiting scented products are top recommendations. Putting it all together, it's a holistic approach. By combining a few practices, like opening windows, filtering the air, and being mindful of product choices, we can make a tangible difference in our indoor environment. This helps not only with daily comfort, but also with long-term health outcomes. Absolutely. Our goal is to empower listeners with the knowledge they need to create a healthier home environment. Too often, air quality is overlooked, especially when discussing wellness. We focus on diet and exercise, but the air we breathe day in and day out is just as critical. One additional point I'd like to mention is that many people love scented products because they associate certain aromas with cleanliness or relaxation. It might be lavender for stress relief or citrus for a fresh, bright feeling. The key is knowing where those scents come from and how frequently you use them. Sometimes just cutting back can dramatically reduce indoor air pollution. Good advice. People can also explore natural freshening methods like simmering citrus peels or herbs briefly on the stove, though proper ventilation is still essential. The important takeaway is that a smell we find pleasant may not be free of side effects, especially in a closed environment. Precisely. By being selective about what we introduce into our homes, we can avoid adding unnecessary pollutants to the air. From wax melts and candles to sprays and cleaners, Every product we use has the potential to affect air quality. Small, mindful changes accumulate over time. Well said. Let's recap the core points. Scented wax melts, though marketed as safer than candles, release a high volume of terpenes, which can form harmful nanoparticles when combined with ozone. Candles, sprays, and other household products also contribute to indoor air pollution, which can reach levels similar to cooking on a gas stove or breathing in diesel fumes. Simple measures can help us take control. Regularly opening windows, choosing unscented or low terpene products, 
using natural scents sparingly, and investing in effective air purification. Photocatalytic oxidation, combined with HEPA filters, is an excellent defense for those looking for a more robust solution. These steps are straightforward yet impactful. If anyone listening has been relying heavily on scented wax warmers or daily air fresheners, this might be a call to reconsider those habits. Improving indoor air quality can lead to noticeable benefits, particularly for those sensitive to airborne contaminants. People may not connect something as simple as a wax melt with potential health issues. But once you understand the science, it becomes clear how everything we breathe in plays a role in our overall well-being. Thank you, Alara. This has been an enlightening discussion. I hope our listeners come away with a clearer understanding of how to maintain healthier indoor air. Remember, it's about informed decisions rather than blanket fear of scented products. With the right strategies, you can balance comfort with well-being. Absolutely, Ethan. Being aware of the underlying science empowers us to make choices that benefit our families and ourselves. Small adjustments can have a big payoff in long-term health. Thanks for having me in this conversation. And thank you for your insights, Alara. For all our listeners, that's our episode for today. We appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to join us again next time for more health-focused discussions. Until then, I'm Ethan Foster. And this is Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, reminding you that understanding what's in your air is a key step toward better health. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.